All right, ladies and gentlemen. You have me, Richard Butler, talking about maximize potential through diversity, inclusion, and equity. That's just a title. I'm gonna talk about whatever I wanna talk about. Because why? I've been talking since Thursday. And I'm learning a lot that just because we set an agenda, and when I start hearing the conversation, I realize, well, that's my agenda. I need to be here for you, not for me. I don't need to be comfortable with what I know. I need to get to know what you need to know. And so ultimately, by the time we're done today, you will walk away from here saying, you know what, I got this. Because what I've been hearing since Thursday is a lot of frustration about the how-tos, and I can't do. As soon as she closes that door, I can keep talking. <laughs> so before I really get started, I want to know who is in this room. I want to know what capacity. I don't need to know your name because I'm not going to remember that. But I want to know who my audience is. What, what is your organization? Why? And tell me why you are here today. Why did you sign up for the business of rowing? And this is the largest business of rowing we've had in a couple of years. And I think part of it is because they invited me back. No, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so just a couple of you. Uh, I'll do it this way. Who's an administrator for a rowing program? And what level administrator are you for a rowing program? Executive director. Executive director. Executive director. Executive director. Owner. Sold. <laughs> Owner. <laughs> Sold. Who are head coaches? A lot of hands. There's a lot of twofers, too. Who uh, repair boats? Because that's a trick question. Of course you repair boats. <laughs> Not too many people have a boat right, like we used to have. Uh, members, board members. OK. Now, they, did I miss any category? Rowers. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so why are you here? Find out what other people are doing, networking, best practices, worst practices, things that's gone bad. How can I do better? Oh, I'm actually been, I'm validated. I'm actually doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Validation. Um, I personally am in this room because I'm actually supposed to be an advanced coaches, but. Uh, Can't learn anything there. Can we give her an applause, please? Because more of you need to be in this room. The day that, the day that we professionalize rowing is the day that we get somewhere. And if you're going to act like a business, like other businesses have figured out 20 years ago, you better be di diverse and inclusive to be competitive. I'm here for inspiration, Richard. Ben's here for inspiration. Just go to my Instagram account, <laughs> at Coach RTB. You'll get all the inspiration you want. I was actually inspired by this session this morning and posted something. But that's the way it is. I'll talk about that in a moment. And so who is working with universities, uh, master rowers, junior rowers, high schools, private schools? Give me the rest. Give me the lay of the land. All of the above. College. Other nonprofits. Foundations. Military. Juniors. Masters. Any public schools? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. 
Community organization, back row? Uh, adults, juniors, adaptive. Adults, juniors, adaptive. Non-traditional communities. I like that word versus underserved. Yeah. Thank you. And so there's a whole lot of you in here doing the same thing with a lot of different demographics, right? And so I hope when you leave this room today, you go to the back of the room, you give each other a fist bump and say, how can I help you? Because if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. I've mentioned that to someone earlier today. And so my agenda, sort of, that'll be thrown out of the window really quickly uh, because that's how I roll. Uh, I'm doing an intro. Hi, I'm Richard Butler. I've been in the rowing industry for about 15 years. I started as a rower when I became the first African-American executive director in the country. And, and I became a rower after the fact. Now I bring that up because my rowing organization was very progressive to actually hire a non-rower to be the executive director. Not because I was black, but because I was a non-rower. That's inclusive, people. We keep thinking I gotta look in five seat and six seat and hire that person's friend. You're going nowhere doing that. You already know how to row. That was exactly what I said in my interview when 14 people sat me in the middle of the room and started asking me rowing questions. And I told all 14 of them, I know nothing about rowing, but I know everything about leadership. I know how to raise money. I know how to get you off the teats of foundations and help you bring your own revenue in. They interviewed over, they had resumes from 60 people that are rowers from all over the United States. None from Alaska. I'm not sure why. <laughs> and I asked them, how many rowers did you interview? And they looked at each other like it was a trick question. They were all of them. That's where you're flawed. And so there are positions within your organization that does not require a rower. You can, you're, you're experts at teaching people how to row. If you need an extra rower in the boat because they're big and scrappy, then teach them to row later. But right now, get your organization in order. You don't need a rower to run your organization. You need a leader to run your organization. And so diversity and inclusion isn't just bringing in a rower. Matter of fact, that's the most segregated thing I've ever heard of. You come in here saying you want diversity and inclusion, but you only hire rowers in every category. Well, congratulations, you're segregated. And so when we talk today, and I talk about your potential, this whole time, I'm talking about you. I'm talking about the coaches, the front line, the influencers of everything. When a coach comes into the boathouse with a pair of Ray-Bans on, the next day, every kid, even they couldn't afford to have a pair of Ray-Bans on. When the coach walks into the boathouse in a pair of Lululemons, two weeks later, every kid in that boat has on a pair of Lululemons. You are the influencer. You are the front line. What are you doing about being more diverse and inclusive? Are you waiting for them to knock on your door? Say, hey, we have rowing. Has anyone ever knocked on your door and say, hey, do you row here? Matter of fact, boathouses are so unwelcoming the front door isn't at the front door, right? You have to go around the back. They're not knocking on your door because they can't find your front door. And most of the demographics that you're trying to recruit are not going down near the water to begin with. And so we have to ask that age-old question that I ask every year for the last 11 years. Are you being a rower in the boathouse or are you a rower in the community? Because your best potential is when you get out in the community and say, hi, I'm a rower. But first, tell me about you. We're going to talk about why diversity and inclusion is important, but not the way that you think. Because I've been listening all week, and people have missed some of the real benefits of being diverse and inclusive. We're going to talk about recruiting and hiring the way that the city of Pittsburgh does it. So my day job, I'm the HR manager for talent development and wellness for the city of Pittsburgh. I help recruit 
for the city of Pittsburgh employees on every level from white collar to hourly wage. I do the professional development for all city of Pittsburgh employees. And I also manage our wellness platform, so the whole well-being of the employee. So I'm gonna give you a perspective from what I do and what the city of Pittsburgh has done, how, and then how it will potentially help you recruit in a different way. And finally, we're gonna take some action steps. And they're really small action steps. And then whatever else you throw at me will be some questions and answers. So this morning I was inspired about being here, so I wrote this. So I was going to end with it, but, and I didn't get a chance to memorize it because I just wrote it, so spare me. <laughs> and so what I know about people in this space of wanting to really do what's right and build their rowing community to be diverse and inclusive on many levels is that sometimes you don't believe in what your purpose is. You don't believe in your potential because so much is going on. You start wondering, why am I doing this? Does anyone care? I don't make enough money. I need transportation. Oh gosh, the river's flooded again. Why do we keep getting up and doing it over and over again? So here, here's what I think. You have come into this world for a purpose. We realize that the human spirit is far stronger than anything that could happen to it. And also realize that giving is the highest level of living. Giving is the highest level of living. We don't do this to get. We do this to give. Obstacles actually strengthen our resolve even more. Struggles help us build character. Every challenging situation actually brings us closer to our inevitable victory. A living is, you know, people ask all the time, well, can you make a living doing this? Here's my thoughts on that. Hell no. A living is made by what we get. But honestly, life is made by what we give. I sincerely believe in receiving graciously and giving unconditionally. And I'm here with you today to give to you. And when you're not getting paid, you have to remember you're getting paid in blessings. You're getting paid because a kid, an adult, a person in a wheelchair are given opportunities. And they get to go home and talk and, talk and share those opportunities. And so it's important for you to grow from those obstacles of docks falling apart and people not paying their dues and this and that and that and that and all those things. And, and just pause for a moment and take a deep breath and say, I'm a badass. <laughs> Look what I do. I don't need your dollars. If they would help. But my blessings is worth way more. What I give is way more, not what I get. And so we're going to do a small exercise. It's a simple exercise. Close your eyes. I'm going to take selfies of you. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully you told your spouse or partner, spouse equivalent, that you were at the convention because they're going to see you on social media. Take a deep breath in through your nose, out through your mouth. Relax your shoulders. Let the tension of the day and the stress of the day just leave your body through your shoulders, through your arms, fingers, through your hips, your chest, your legs, your knees. Feel your knees relax through your calves. Feel the energy just go out through the floor. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And blow it out again and just feel your shoulders relax a little more. Feel your head feel like an anchor. It's just sunk. It's just so light. It's such a feather. And as you listen to my voice, as you clear your mind, as clear as a flat lake first thing in the morning, not one ripple, not one ripple, and the birds sound so, so loud. Like turn down that volume, they're so loud. 
Feel your breath. Breathe in through your nose, out through your mouth. And believe that you deserve this moment. Believe that you need to be still for a moment because you have so much work to do. But that work isn't a burden. That work is a blessing. It's you giving. It is your purpose. And now as you're, as you're sitting there with that non-rippled lake, you're going to go somewhere. I want you to imagine your favorite or not so favorite professional sports team. Football, basketball, soccer. Imagine it. Try and imagine it. What are the size of the athletes? What is the tone and texture of their skin? What does their hair look like? And now I want you to take that same vision. I want you to go to your boathouse. I need you to go to your boathouse. I need you to be in a boat. What does that boat look like? Who are the people in that boat? What's the texture of their hair? The color of their skin? What's their physical ability? Are they big? Are they strong? Are they the same? How is that boat moving? And then you've left the boat, you've left the boathouse. Now go to your community. Who is your community? What do they look like? How do they talk? What's the texture of their hair? The color of their skin? How are they built? Or are they just like you? Now take a big, deep breath. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. Relax your shoulders. Relax your body. Relax your soul. Because you're about to show your potential. You're about to take over the rowing world with the knowledge that you're going to gain for the next hour or two. Open your eyes. Tell me what you saw with your professional team. Who were those people? Reflection of America. Reflection of America. Your professional team is a reflection of America. Wow. Who else saw that with their professional team? Head nodding, it's okay to speak to me. <laughs> it's okay. Use your words, people. Storm basketball. Pardon me? Storm basketball team. Storm basketball team. And what do they look like? WNBA, they're all really tall. Yes. And a, a mix of colors. Mix of colors. I, know, I saw diverse men. You saw diverse men. Yes. Anyone else? What you see? I love the woman that talked about the women because usually the, no one remembers that women play sports. I appreciate you. Did everyone else see men? Right? You all saw men. No? no? Who said no? How dare you be different? Because <laughs> you saw your own team. Right. So that's your community. We're going to get to that part, right? Also, your favorite team. <laughs> Are your, is your team getting paid? Because that's a violation of NCAAs. I'm just saying. <laughs> what about your rowers on that calm lake? What do they look like? The face of America. Face of America. I know why. For your crew. Really you work really hard at it. Anyone else? What does your crew look like? Women. And what else about them? White, White women. Texture of the hair, right? I just threw you some softballs out there. Anyone else? What about your own community? Same? Same? Because I've had to be very intentional about it. You have to be intentional about it. Front row, anything about your community that you live in, that you Multilingual. Cool. Are your boats multilingual? No. no. 
Anyone else? Your community. Very diverse. Very diverse. Are you in LA proper? Culver City. Culver City? Yeah. A lot of, you know, Hispanic people, a lot of you know, African American, all sorts of people, Brazilian, uh, like European. Love it. A lot of mix. A lot of mix. Anyone else? I'm seeing right now these like four different countries. Um, Brazil, Argentina, Spain, Colombia, Peru, and Okay, and how many of you saw signage in multiple languages in your community? Yeah. Yeah? Spanish. Yeah? Korean? So I made that exercise up on my way to the bathroom. <laughs> That's how I roll. <laughs> <laughs> what am I getting at here? Another softball. Yep, you're all, you live in a diverse community, but your welcome mat is on the other side of the boathouse for that community. What did I say earlier? Stop being a rower in a boathouse and be a rower in the community. When you tell me you can't find people to be in your boathouse that is different, you're lying to yourself. You're not being intentional. But this isn't to berate you. I have plenty of times to berate you. So, thank you for indulging me with that. And I hope that taking you through a quick meditation gave you a moment to just take that deep breath. I really mean it. If you don't be still for just a moment on behalf of you, then you're useless to your efforts. People think that you need all of this fancy schmancy mantra mm, 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 stuff to meditate. Meditation is also movement. When I'm in a boat and I'm moving, I'm in that zone, I'm meditating. When I'm standing in front of my window watching birds in the tree washing my dishes, I'm meditating. I'm being still. Just being still, calming the heart. And when you calm your heart, you will see clarity. You will reach your fullest potential when you empty your mind in your heart of all of that other stuff. You know, we talk about with the seven habits of highly effective people, big rocks and gravel. Most people spend a lot of time in the gravel versus focusing on the big rocks. Dump that gravel and get to the big rocks. You know, all of you are important people in my mind and, and to the people in your lives. And you have this big, long, long, long to-do list. I like to see a longer not-to-do list. Because once you scratch off that not-to-do list, you can get to the big rocks. And then you will reach your fullest potential to better serve your community. And so I told you today I'm going to talk about you and what it is that you do and how your rowing program can reach its fullest potential. And so just to backtrack for a moment, to summarize, the very first thing you need to do is be still. The second thing you need to do is look at your community that you live in and invite those people to be where you are. So why is that both and inclusion important to the sport of rowing? Without it, we die. Pardon me? Without it, we're not. Mr. Harris said, without it, we're not. Anyone else? Why is it important? It's important to everything. Why is it important to everything? To have a full, informed experience from across any kind of I mean, diversity in anything in life generally contributes to its success. It's important to everything to have a full spectrum of life. We need, we need all of that, those influences. Anyone else? I heard some. I heard noises. We're not as competitive. We're not, We're not as competitive. USA basketball. So I was a member of the USOC Diversity Champions Committee. So 48 of us of national governing bodies of sport met quarterly 
to talk about our diversity concerns and issues. USA Basketball, guess what their number one diversity concern is? They need more white kids. <laughs> and so while they're waiting to knock on the doors of the suburbanites as they compete against lacrosse and hopefully rowing, <laughs> they go overseas to make their teams more diverse and inclusive. And they go overseas because the stats of having people seven feet taller is actually greater than it is in America. And so they look, so you got one out of every five, or you know, these numbers are very not staggering. And so USA Basketball has a very robust international program because they gave up on the suburban program. And, I, and I'm t here to tell you, you know, I have no problem with white kids. So if those kids go to middle school and know they suck at basketball, then tell them they don't suck at rowing. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We don't cut you in rowing. Arche alluded to this, right? You get, you, Arche has a strategy. He goes after, right away, the kids that were cut from those basketball teams and volleyball teams and football teams and say, hey, and I go to the kids and I don't, I don't even deal with athletes. 3% of all kids in urban setting actually participate in sports. So my potential athletic pool is bigger than going after athletes. And then I go to those kids and I say, guess what? We don't cut people from rowing. Everyone rows. You just might be in a sea boat, but you're in a row. We need you. You're available to this team. Everybody rows in rowing. That's a selling point to kids. They're not going to sit the bench. They're going to sit the erg. <laughs> <laughs> so research have shown that when student athletes socialize with athletes of different racial group, the interactions positively contribute to the student's academic development. They are satisfied, they are more satisfied with their sports program, their level of cultural awareness and commitment to promoting racial understanding is greater. Students who participate in sports in diverse settings are more motivated and better able to deal with conflicts, as well as appreciate both similarities and differences amongst their peers. High performance teams most often include diversity of social life, experiences, educational, past, and cultural ba backgrounds. Moreover, highly diverse and inclusive teams perform better and excel at higher levels than those that are not. In fact, research has shown that diversity can enhance productivity from 30 to 40 percent. Who wants that for their team? Right? So what I also have sold to parents of the private rowing scholastic programs and the club teams, and at least I try to sell to the coaches, imagine if you're rowers that have never been exposed to people that are different, how you are setting them up for failure to go out into America, to go off to college. You're setting them up to fail because you're not exposing them. So if you don't really believe in your heart of hearts that being a bunch of inclusive is good for your boathouse, maybe you should believe in your heart of hearts it's good for the growth of your rowers. And those parents. Uh -huh. Absolutely, Patrick, and those parents. And I'm going, to, I'm going to say something again as I look through this room, as I heard who was in this room. I've been encouraged since I've been here, and I've been in this game for U.S. Rowing and for uh, other organizations. I'm also the diversity uh, consultant for Pittsburgh Ultimate Frisbee and also for Robert Morris Women's uh, Rowing Team. And and those folks like to have these conversations. And when you leave here today, you need to go back to your college coach's room and your advanced college room and say, how come you weren't there? Because again, you're the influencer. The, the people that you want to row is not knocking on your door. And so let's talk about recruiting for a moment. Or let, let me just pause for a moment. Right here, 
So far, give me your nuggets, give me your takeaways from where we started, from the intro, from the little thing that I read you that you inspired me to write this morning, to clearing of the mind and being still, to the other benefits that you never thought about for being diverse and inclusive. Yes, Pat, I'm so glad you're here. I thought you ran off. Sorry I called you Pat. You didn't hear me call your name. It's That's no okay. Worries. Okay. Sorry. I just realized that. <laughs> Michelle, it's no, no yep. worries. Yeah. I got it. Um, but it, it's interesting for me because, um, you know, I went to an all-girls boarding school, 50, you know, 30 years ago. It, it's a different world. But I'm just trying to be there and trying to be present for these young people. And I don't know what they see as an, for me as an adult working out with them and for me as an African-American woman working out with them in Minnesota. Right? So. You don't stand out. <laughs> so I don't know what they see. <laughs> Thank you for that. that and, and you're there for the, and you're there. giving and you're helping them reach their fullest potential. And so, you just add water and it's going to happen. We're gonna have fast boats, don't work. But your presence being there, even if it's silent, is helping them understand cultural differences because you are guaranteeing you do things just a little different. Just a little. Anyone else? Spanish-speaking part of our city, a lot of the students who uh, pass through our door are monolingual, and we don't have any Spanish signs in the boathouse. Uh, and the reason that was uh, pointed out to me by our board is, well, we don't have any Spanish-speaking coaches. So, <laughs> they can't read the signs. Right, we, we, need to, you know, we need to start there. Um, so my thought is, as I'm meditating on what our program looks like, yes. you know, it, there are some cultural change and uh, it's an easy one and it's the first step that I think anyone can make and it's a conversation start. Hey, I see you got Spanish speaking signs around here. What's uh, what's up with it? In fact, I will share with you, this is, the, this is a humbling story. The one time it came up when we talked about having Spanish language signs was on our security warning. And, uh, you know, the, uh, a real moment of introspection. Really? We can't have a sign that says Banyo, but we want a sign that says Warning, you're on video. Right. <laughs> um, so that, it, it was, uh, that's pretty amazing. And what you just said, even having this conversation can be tough at some time. So I appreciate you just saying that. And so we, lear we lessons learned, right? So we're, we're all about protecting ourselves from the people that speak Spanish, but we can't let them know where the bathroom is. Lack of board members in the room. Um, do, we need, do we need microphones for the people that are talking? No, just a, and like, and I walked out of like trick or coach to work for chief a moment earlier, and it was full of board. And like, where which conversation is more valuable? And I, and I, I'm actually really. Right now. I appreciate that. And so am I. Mm. The business of rowing was created because I helped create it many years ago, to get more than just coaches to the table for U.S. rowing, to bring the admit people to the table, to help professionalize the sport. That's why we have the business of rowing. This year, we've embedded inclusion on purpose because people weren't coming to the inclusion part. Yes, please, Kevin. 
Use the microphone. No, no, no. To your point, uh, my name is Kevin Harrison, and I am the head coach of the Women's Growing University. It happens that I just put my name in my to pet. run for male vice president he needs of the U.S. Realm. He needs you to have the mic for the okay. video. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. So um, I've just put my name in to run for the board of directors for U.S. Realm. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I hope to serve. Uh, unfortunately, it's the male vice president, so only the men can vote for it. Um, but what you're saying is... Go to the point. Well, there is a female vice president as well. But, uh, you know, to... You know, uh, yeah, only the men can vote. So, you yeah, know. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> So let's. <laughs> so I think you're absolutely right about that. Um, I don't think that that is necessarily an indication of how the entire board feels about inclusion, but there is an element to that, and you're absolutely right. So that's something that has to be changed. And, and you were talking about the nuggets. So the nugget that I get, of course, I'm a D1 kind of focus program. biggest change that I think U.S. rowing will to make over the next years so that we all can grow. So I just wanted to put that out there and thank you. And, and I thank you addressing not just U.S. rowing board members, but board members in general. Board members in general. These sessions are designed for board members in general because I cannot have a robust DNI program if it's not a bylaw and a mission statement coming from the board. Because that needs to be bulletproof so every time you get newly elected officials, your bylaws and your mission statements are there. It's your governance. Your governance should be all about this. If it's not, then shame on your board. And by the way, this is a safe place to talk and to be honest and to be uncomfortable. I swear I won't talk about you in your face, but later on in social media, poof. Yeah. <laughs> Can I add something? So I used Ashley, use the mic, please. Oh, sorry. I'm really loud. I'm not used to it. He wants it for the video. That's the word. Um, we talk a lot. So I'm the executive director of the Chicago Training Center. We're completely free and uh, full access is the term I just learned after doing this for two years. We're a program for inner city kids in Chicago. Um, and we have a lot of conversations with our alumni. Uh, we, start, we reserve all of our paid coaching positions for alumni. We have a lot of conversations with them about the words that we use and the terminology. Yeah, so, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'm going to have one more question. 
because this is not the question and answer period, but I love that you're getting engaged, but we have short time. And so I wanna cover just a quick recruitment idea, and then I'm gonna do this question and answer thing. And then we can also take it outside of this room and we can do it over bourbon if you're, if you're buying. <laughs> Patrick? I'm so glad I don't work for U.S. Ruin anymore. That sounds like something <laughs> someone has to work on. <laughs> I'm just a consultant, but duly noted. Uh, I am updating the how to create the community rowing program guidebook for U.S. Ruin. It's presently on the website, but it, everything you know changes. Even gender conversation changes. Uh, I'm also going to be updating the U.S. Rowing Chapter 6, uh, Coaches, Level 2 Coaches, uh, Diversity Inclusion Chapter, because since that's been written, uh, we have terms like queer gender that didn't exist even you know, when that was written. So uh, they're trying to keep up, and I'm doing my best to try to help them keep up. But I can, I, I would say, I, I'm going to uh, write down my email. I'll do this, write down my email, coach, R, T, B, R as in Richard, T as in Tom, B as in Butler, at gmail.com. I'm gonna send you suggested readings, and just possibly we start a book club. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> because, because we have to educate ourselves. I, I can't say this over and over again, but before you begin to introduce your community to a new community, how culturally competent are you? How comfortable are you? How comfortable are you of asking questions? Well, I'm gonna tell you something. Start talking to that person, make a mistake and say, I'm sorry. How do you identify? Please tell me. You gotta have the conversation, you have to be comfortable. If you're not comfortable with that, don't do this. I've made lots of mistakes. So in Pittsburgh, we have this thing called the Rooney Rule. Is anyone familiar with the Rooney Rule? Yes? So the Rooney Rule was started by Dan Rooney, the owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers, where he thought it was a crime that the NFL did not have African-American leadership anywhere, especially coaches. And so he decided for the Pittsburgh Steelers, we were going to intentionally hire an interview, qualified African Americans, 
or of any other minorities and women for leadership positions, including including quarterback. And they will not hire anyone until they fulfill that interview process. Qualified. So one internally, one externally, had to be in the talent pool. So they were very intentional. Because of that, the NFL went from two African-American quarterbacks to eight. That was so popular, the NFL adopted it. When Mr. Rooney died a couple years ago, Mayor Bill Peduto, my boss of the city of Pittsburgh, decided to honor him and invoke an executive order for the Rooney Rule for the hiring practices for the city of Pittsburgh. I actually benefited from that. I was appointed by the mayor to my position after being qualified, but what he did was human resources in leadership positions could only hire once they have proven that they were intentional of interviewing women and minorities internally and externally for promotion or not promotion. Pittsburgh has 300,000 residents, 36% minorities. We implemented the program. We increased the minority leadership in the city of Pittsburgh in one year's time as of last year by 21%. 21%. If you eliminate our public safety, which is basically police and fire, which is all white men and some women, and those promotions, then our numbers go up to 24% of the actual moving the needle. This wasn't bringing in affirmative action. This was being intentional and just simply saying, we will not hire until we increase our talent pool. So guess what? That was so successful, ESPN did a story on us and basically just said, Pittsburgh is badasses. They get it. So Amazon, Pinterest, and some of the other larger corporations just implemented the Rooney Rule. Now, the reason why we did it for the city of Pittsburgh wasn't to increase minority participation. It was to close the pay gap because we continue to hire minorities and women in the lowest paying jobs. The Rooney Rule is to bring you in as leadership, to bring you in as executive directors, head coaches, marketing people, communication, bringing you in on a white collar level, that closes the uh, economic gap in the city of Pittsburgh. And so as I give you the Rooney Rule, can you create your own version of that? I don't know, how many of you know that U.S. Rowing's Learn to Row Day poster can be given to you in Spanish? Why? Because I created that. Thank you. Thank you. I have 15 minutes. Oh, I'm starting to get fired up. Can I stump for you, Kevin Harris? <laughs> get fired up. Ready to go. Ready to go. In the hole. Um, and, and so why not take your Learn to Row poster from your own boathouse and, and create your own Rooney Rule and say, we're going to hang this in 10 different hair salons and barber shops and places, Jewish community centers, that we normally would not hang our poster. Because the silliest thing I've ever seen is you hang your silly poster up at the boathouse. <laughs> Those people know how to row. <laughs> and so create, my point is you want to increase your potential and grow your and get your boats to be faster, if that's your goal. Or to change lives, to give blessings, to, to show opportunity. Do something different. If you are having out recruiting, and you haven't recruited the audience that you want, then that's a failed recruitment system. Stop doing it. Come up with another way. Be intentional. The Rooney Rule or the Ashley rule, or the Ben rule, right? Or the Eva rule, or the Megan rule. Patrick rule, Andy rule, what is, your, what is your rule? What are your rules? So give me your questions, please. Richard, um, how do you, so 
Hey, thank you. With a special level of practical elements and, and building things into your daily practice, that's very helpful. If you have an, op an occasional opportunity to speak truth to power in some of these, like one of the problems I see is truth or power is not willingly coming to this conversation. Fact, it's just not here. And uh, I mean, it's really evident in just looking around the room. I don't even have to, because I get, I get a lot of calls from female coaches specifically. And we talk about the hiring process. And the one thing I tell all of them is you will not see yourself in that at, that at the other end of the table. You will see me every time. So you have to convince me to hire you every time. And 100% it's true, every time. So like, I can't tell them what to say because I don't know what to say. I can only prepare them for the moment that's coming. But I do because I am the way I am have access to these moments. They're not often, but they come. And that's what would be the most helpful thing. So do you have a question? Like, what do I say to the board members and leaders who are, who are not here? You suck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He asked, what did you say to the board members who are not here? I say, you suck. So maybe it's not what you say to the board members, it's what you say to the people who pay the dues and what they should be saying to the board members. So I'm, so I'm a private business. So like, then what do you say to the board members? But like I'm one That's why you're a private business. I'm the only, by the way, not many of those. And so, so if you're the owner, you appointed the board. I'm talking about wider than that, within our sport. Like oh, within like, the sport. Like, OK, like thank you. I was about to go after your no, business. No, 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 like, okay. no like, I have a, like, there's, by the way, for the board members who are here, thank you. Because um, I don't want to make you raise your hands again. But um, yeah, for people who, have, who are running these you know. uh, it's, it's, you know, That's great. And I've said it earlier, if it's not coming from the board, then you're dead in the water. And I can't actually give you the conversation on how to, it's whoever appointed those people to the board. When you're interviewing the board, do you interview the board and say, so tell me your thoughts on diversity and inclusion? Or do you talk about, can you help us get out, stop us from bleeding? Oh, you're an attorney. Can you help fill out our contracts? How are you interviewing your board? What is your governance? What is the governance committee actually doing? Again, is it in your bylaws? Is, it in, is there a mission statement? And so we're going we're gonna to have to go nuts and bolts on that and fire the board if necessary. Do you need to educate the boards? I mean, I don't, I don't think that there are boards that are vehemently opposed to making their clubs more diverse and that they think it's harder than it is. to go in and be like, it's not that hard. And, and okay, good, good point. I'm going to cut you off there because I'm getting the finger uh, in the back. Of the <laughs> that finger. <laughs> Board development is part of what you do in your organization. And so if you're not doing board development and educating them on these things, then shame on you again. There are nonprofits out there that, that will give you money to do board development. Nonprofits like that type of thing. So don't ask for money to fix your boat. Ask for money to fix your board. One more question, we'll take it outside of the home. No, Patrick. <laughs> Recruiting specifically people because I live in Washington State, East Side, pretty white. And it's, it's hard. Okay. So she's asking, she's asking for conversation. So I'm going to have to end here unless you ever say something that no one's ever said before. It's going to be remarkable and it's going to change U.S. rowing for the better. People over 60, because that's the largest population that's growing. And I haven't heard anything about I just turned 60. I get it. Yeah. She said, people over 60, get them on your boards. 
getting on rollers on your boards. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to say I appreciate your courage to come into a conversation like this. I appreciate that you, in your heart and in your soul, that you want to learn. Thank you very much for your time. Go out there and do good.